We are in, these incre in this incredible wine cellar over here in Niagara-on-the-Lake, Pilateri Estates. We are here with Charlie Pilateri. He is the CEO of this magnificent operation. Uh, it, this is just an unbelievable place. Charlie, welcome. Thank you. Welcome here. We're <laughs> really happy to have you here. Well, you know, maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit about Pilateri Estates. It's, it's got a phenomenal story, steeped in history, and in Italy, of course. Well, we are, we're Italian heritage, and uh, we've been making wine now for almost 20 years in Niagara. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pilateri Estates uh, is a family business. Uh, we're all here, my sisters. My sister Lucy is a CMO, and my sister Connie is CFO. And I'm in charge of uh, sales and production. I'm the CEO. And uh, we've got my nephew Richard, and mom and dad are still in the business, so we're a family business, and we've been doing this for quite some time, but we love making wine. And clearly you guys are doing an awesome job. I mean, so the winery opened in, is it in 1993? Is that right? 93 was the official opening. Uh, we started making wine in 1991, and uh, we've, we've basically gone through a couple transitions. We're more known for ice wine uh, globally in the world, but uh, we make a lot of wonderful high-end red wines and some white wines too. So we're going to be tasting a little bit of red wine uh, down in the cellar here. So tell us a little bit about, about that. Well, uh, Pilatari is known mostly for its Cabernet Franc. And I think uh, we do a, a beautiful Cabernet Franc. We also do some other blends as well, but more so the Bordeaux style wines. So uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Cabernet Sauvignon are our workhorses. I do have a Cabernet Sauvignon that I'd like to try with you. Okay. Uh, this is from the 2010 vintage. Okay. And uh, this particular wine was... Uh, produced right from this home field. So uh, in most uh, vintages, we classify our wines. So if, uh, if the vintage has more than 2,100 heat units in a specific vintage, here we go ladies, Thank you. then um, we will classify the wines. We've only made uh, reserve or family reserve in uh, 1995, 1998, uh, 2002, 2007, and now 2010. So this will be a classified vintage uh, from uh, the 2010 vintages and also 2012 looks wonderful too so we're pretty excited about the vintage coming up. That's awesome and so this is 100% cab? We're going exclusively French oak now so we, we like the finesse of the French oak and our wine master Alec Kalizic, he loves the the really smooth kind of characteristics and those nice sweet French oak flavors that he gets so that's why we're going uh, exclusively French oak so this is uh, our first kind of hit at French oak here. In most vintages, uh, we, we talk about classifying them. We, we do try to make reserve wines every year, but uh, if we don't get enough sunshine, what we do with the reserve wines is we put them in the base wines. So the base wines always have good consistency. So even though it might not be a great year out there, the reserve fruit will help the base wine taste better. Yeah, this is clearly absolutely delicious. It's got lots of, it's got nice complexity and lots of good finish, and, and it is very smooth as well. So if you were to say how long you would keep this wine for, what would you say, Charlie? Well, it's just a baby. It's just been released now. Uh, it's a 2010, so I could, I could say you could drink this easily for the next uh, five to ten years. It'll, it, the, the pH number is actually quite low here, so it's great working wine. Now, what about the label itself? You were saying that this is a new label, and you've got the cartouche on, on, the, on the front. So what exactly is the cartouche? Well, there's the, this actually is the first lot, and the cartouche hasn't come yet for this bottle, but this actually has uh, this new kind of embossing kind of feel that we've done with the label. And you'll notice that there's uh, the Coretto uh, is detailed kind of in a nice faint kind of um, gray tone in the back with our logo. Very nice, clean look, and there's the arch of a barrel right here. So that's kind of what we're we're working from. Beautiful, elegant label. And the Caretto, I think there's a little bit of history based there as well, is there not? Right. Uh, our family comes from Sicily, mm -hmm. and in our lobby, when you uh, come in, you'll see this beautiful Caretto Siciliano. Uh, I love the way you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sisters think alike. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that Italian, whoa. <laughs> well, uh, the Caretto Siciliano is uh, coming from uh, Sicily, of course, and it is a cart that my grandfather used to bring the fruit in from the field. And, uh, and that's what we do. We still bring in the fruit. And uh, so the cart adorns all of our labels. And uh, it is a wonderful heirloom. The eldest uh, cart was donated uh, when he passed away to the Ottawa Museum of Man and now sits in the museum in Ottawa. So it's an exciting thing to go and see, too. So should we try something else? Yes, why don't we? Charlie? Absolutely. Let's, I've got another. I'm going to pour you a little bit of Merlot here, too. Uh, I think it'll work very well. The 2010 vintage just 
just shines with so much fruit. Same vintage, again. Same vintage uh, just 100% Merlot here. Okay, uh, thank you. In most uh, Merlot fields, we always have some difficulty with winter kill and things like that. Yeah. But uh, we've now installed all of the wonderful wind machines that you see around Niagara. And uh, we haven't lost any vines in the last couple of years. So the Merlot is really starting to come out really beautiful. And uh, this is planted, uh, my dad planted this in 1991. So okay. coming on almost 20 year old vines here. And all the wines are available at the winery? Yes, uh, unless we're sold out. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, is a good thing. <laughs> the, the Cabernet Franc uh, is sold out right now and it sells for 18. So they're all kind of in that nice range. Uh, and all the wines are available at the winery, yes. Okay, so I think we're going to taste this, and then we're going to try some ice wines. Oh, we're going to go upstairs after that, are we? Absolutely. Right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, ladies. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling awfully hungry. We're here on the Pillatory patio, and we are going to, have, we're going to be treated to some wonderful oysters from Tide and Vine Oyster Company. We're here with Michael Langley, the chef here. Michael, what have you got, plan what have you got before us? Uh, today... We have brought for you some uh, Melpacks from Melpac Bay, Prince Edward Island. Mm -hmm. It's a very sweet and salty oyster. Um, we also have some citrus pickled horseradish to go on top, mm. and a red wine vinegar and shallot mignonette, and our uh, house cocktail sauce. Wow. And we're going to follow it up with an Atlantic peach and local zucchini skewer on the barbecue, and our Atlantic lobster roll with a caper and tarragon mayo. Well, I know Charlie's got some fabulous white wines planned for us, mm -hmm. so I'm sure it's going to be an incredible lunch. Well, I know we've had, we've had the occasion to enjoy Michael's food a number of times now, and I have never been disappointed. It's always been absolutely delicious, and I expect it's going to be the same this time. Let's hope so. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Okay, so for lunch, uh, we really enjoyed that beautiful uh, Pinot Grigio. The, the Pinot Grigio uh, is a 2011 vintage. Uh, is from one, some of our older vines here at Pilateri, uh, planted in 1993. And uh, it goes very well with the oysters. The, the oysters, the Malpec oysters and Pinot Grigio, to me, are a perfect match. And the second wine we actually had was uh, a wine called Protagonist. And Protagonist, with that lobster sandwich, absolutely delicious. Uh, a blend of Riesling and Gewürztraminer with a little splash of Sauvignon Blanc in there, too. Uh, wonderful uh, new label, a new look for Pilateri, and uh, an exciting wine uh, with the lobster sandwich. And the salad was great, too. So we, uh, what a great lunch. Okay, well, we just had an incredible lunch here at Pilateri, and now we're going to enjoy ice wine, which is one of the things that Pilateri is most known for. So, Charlie, what are we going to be enjoying this afternoon well, with I, you? I thought, that, uh, I thought the best thing for us to do is to have uh, a little cross-section of ice wines. So we're going to be tasting a Riesling ice wine to start. And uh, Riesling is, is always a beautiful, beautiful ice wine. It always has lots of color and uh, great viscosity, but the aromatics from Riesling is just always the best, I think. We make a lot of Videl as well, uh, and Videl is usually the workhorse, but Riesling just tends to show the best qualities of ice wine, and I think in terms of, you know, the Asian culture, the Asian culture really enjoys the Videl flavors, but I think the North American culture likes the Rieslings more, so let's try these uh, together. Here we go. Thank you. So, uh, most of this Riesling is planted um, on our, our, my Uncle Ch Charlie's farm. Actually, I'm a Charlie too, so we're <laughs> lots, lots of Charlies. That's why we came uh, uh, my, my Uncle Charlie's farm, my, my Uncle uh, Lilo Puma farm. And this Riesling now is coming in about 20 years old. So you need the age of that vine to get that really nice, big, rich flavor into the fruit. And uh, the wines are so really full and lush and dynamic. Uh, this was picked at about 39 bricks and uh, was produced at, a, uh, I guess, the first week in January, so about the 7th of January when we picked this last year. Uh, and we had another hit at it. It was a little warmer year for ice wine in general, but uh, ice wine we tend to pick every year. We don't really miss a year. The only vintage we've ever missed was 2001, El Nino. Oh, yes. So Canada always gets ice wine. Yes. So it's very rare we don't get it. So this particular ice wine, absolutely delicious. Uh, Riesling from Michael Charlie's Farm. So cheers. Nice. <laughs> and Rieslings are typically, I think, a little more refined, a little more elegant than uh, the Vidal. Like you were saying, the Vidal is more like the, um, the workhorse yeah, grape. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fruitier. It, it has lots of those lychee and, and marmalade kind of textures to it, where Riesling is more peachy and apricot and a little bit more elegant, a little bit more fine. Now, what do you attribute your success in Weiss wine? 
as Canadians, we don't really understand what the infatuation is, but the rest of the world isn't Canadian. So when they look at us, they say, you do what? You actually pick frozen grapes on the vine at minus eight Celsius and bring them back to the winery and squeeze them. And we say, we do. And they say, wow, that sounds fantastic. So you know, we're, we think we're crazy, and they think we're just amazing. So uh, I guess that's the infatuation, is that uh, the Asians and, and all the cultures from uh, the world recognize how wonderful ice wine is. So, and they, I guess there's an attraction to it that way. Oh, absolutely. And this is, I have the apricot is screaming out for me with this wine. This Riesling is absolutely delicious. It really is. Yeah, do you? Okay. I'm going to be pouring now, the, the second ice wine I'm going to pour for you is a Cabernet Sauvignon ice wine. Okay. Now, Cabernet Sauvignon ice wine is not typically uh, an ice wine that you would see very much of. It's just because the yields are so small. Uh, tip, from a, a normal Vidal uh, crop, you're probably at one-eighth the total volume. Or with Cabernet Sauvignon, you're probably in around that one twelfth or one fourteenth of the total okay. volume. Yep. So really concentrated flavors. There you go, ladies. Look at that color. It is, and a, a fairly dark ice wine as well for Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, the colors here, you can't, you can't, it looks kind of you know light, light rosé-ish, but mm -hmm. uh, not really that dark. But pretty good color for a red ice wine. Red ice wines predominantly don't have a lot of color to them because the skins have almost lost their color, most uh -huh. of their color during. Uh, they're freezing and thawing on the vine, but this one actually kept quite a bit of color. So, uh, Dude, cheers, really, yeah, cheers. cheers. Really, <laughs> really, really happy with this with this look too. And this is just a, you know a bowl of cherries. You know, life a is a bowl. Yeah, of cherries. cherries it is. Yeah. Just a bowl of cherries. You put your nose to this, yes. and it just has this huge, wonderful oh, aromatic yeah. sensation of cherries mm -hmm. and berries, and yeah. some people say you know blackberry pie and all kinds of things like that. So what, but, what would you serve with this? What would you eat? You know, anything that goes with cherries. You can have a black forest cake uh, or uh, cherry bonbons or, or chocolate. Uh, chocolate, absolutely. Oh, nice. uh, dark truffles or anything uh, with some really, really nice dark sensations to it would go very well with this. Yeah, that's absolutely delicious too. And I know, Pilateri, you are known as, uh, you have wonderful uh, VQA wines as well, but you're over 50, I think around 50% of your production in a good year is, is all about ice wine. It's all ice wine. Uh, we, we only make uh, about, I'd say, half of our production is regular wine. The other half of our production is ice wine. So we're, our ice wine harvest is twice as long as our regular harvest. So we're squeezing a lot during uh, December and January, and it's a long, long harvest. But uh, everything's VQA, and uh, everything's 100% Canadian. We don't, we don't do any imports. It's all local product and, and really dynamic, really exciting local product with with lots of longevity and ageability too. So, so Pilateri is definitely an ambassador to the world of Canada. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I like to think so. I like, to, I, like to, I like the way you put that, Suzanne. I think, uh, you know, we've, we've always had great leaders in the business. Uh, uh, all of the peers in the business have always been very good to us. And, and I think we're giving back to the rest of Canada now. And uh, 32 countries strong, uh, promoting uh, all over the world, uh, Asia-specific and, and growing. But, uh, you know, at home as well, we're, we, we serve a lot of customers out our front door and, and uh, it's working very well. What I think is really cool, too, is that you were saying that, and I, I don't know if this is exactly right, but that you make ice wine out of about 13 different grape varieties. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. We're a little, my, my dad will say we're a little crazy. We shouldn't do that. <laughs> Uh, I left some Merlot last year, and we took about one twentieth of the volume. So you can imagine how expensive that that Merlot is. Uh, but uh, we do lots of different styles. We we do uh, thirteen different styles of ice wines: Gewurz, Traminer, Riesling, Vidal, Semillon, Sauvignon Blanc ice wines. Pinot Blanc ice wine this year. Kerner ice wine is our newest Ooh, ice wine. A new one. So we've got lots of new ones. We do in the Reds. We do uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, a Sangiovese ice wine, mm -hmm. Shiraz ice wine. So we're 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 always playing with different varieties. So it's a lot of fun. Now this is incredible. I just if we can just take a, a moment to talk about this other uh, unbelievable ice wine you have. What is what is this one called? And tell us a little bit about this one. Uh, this is called uh, Exclamation Ice Wine, and Exclamation is our reserve line. Uh, this was one of our first attempts at doing Sauvignon Blanc ice wine, and uh, we've had a lot of demand for 750 bottles. So we said let's make a decanter. So we made a beautiful decanter bottle with uh, Sauvignon Blanc 2009 uh, ice wine in it absolutely delicious selling here at the winery for $150 so uh, something really special. Yeah. 
I think it's worth every penny. That uh, looks amazing. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. 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 Cheers.